Hello, welcome to Bedrock 17. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I made two vlogs where I complained to the BBC about uh, their lack of coverage on the uh, on the Burma crisis here and here. And they promised to reply within 10 working days with an email, and they have done so. So I will be reading that out to you and uh, giving my opinions on it. If you press the CC button down here somewhere. You can activate closed captioning, which will allow you to uh, see the letter on screen as I read it out. And you can also translate it into different languages, courtesy of Google. We're just about high tech. Alternatively, if you so wish, you can read it in the description box below. So, let's analyze this. Dear Mr. Crushy, thank you for contacting us. We understand you believe BBC News has not sufficiently reported of the ongoing conflict in Rakhine State, Burma. We are aware of the online lobby activity on this issue and have received a wide range of feedback on a number of aspects of the conflict. In order to use licensed fee resources appropriately, we regret we cannot offer to address each individual point and are sending this reply to many of those who have contacted us. <laughs> I wasn't the only one! Firstly, it is important to stress that the Burmese authorities have not granted BBC News permission to report from Rakhine. Whoa, 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 okay, okay, fair enough. They haven't granted you access, but I watch TV, and I have seen enough television programs to know that journalists are extremely resourceful. In fact, journalists are sort of spy ninjas. They will do everything and anything. Get a story. They'll go through all sorts of crap just to get one story. I mean, inevitably, they'll get captured, but then the superhero will rescue them, so that's fine. But sorry, Scott, if you can't cross a guarded border with people who want to kill you with weapons just to get a story, then you you don't deserve to call yourself a journalist. Damn it! Get through that border and report. Channel Four did it. Channel Four, real journalists. Yeah. Wussy journalists. You're the BBC, you're the Queen Britain Broadcasting Corporation. Just fly in there. Do some journalism. Yeah. Pointy finger at you. This poses problems with reporting directly from the region and has also made it increasingly difficult to verify greatly differing accounts from both sides of the conflicts. No verifiable evidence has been brought forward to back up claims of thousands of deaths if it has been reflected in recent reports from international organizations such as Human Rights Watch. Okay, fair enough. There are two, there are loads of accounts. But, I have seen the news mention accounts have been verified, and what they do is say, allegedly, according to this source, according to this unverified source, but they still Say the source, even if I haven't verified it. So why? I mean, why can't you? Why can't you say that? Why can't you? You know, say an alleged source. Um, and the fact that the fact that Burma isn't letting you report is proof enough that something's happening. Okay, something is happening. Burma isn't isn't wanting you to see stuff happening. So I'm trying to cover it up, saying you don't see anything here. So something's happening. So at the very very least, mention. Something's happening, and in the last couple of weeks, I haven't heard anything on the BBC or Sky mention that. Guardian have mentioned it, and they did a, they did a, a whole article. It was a short article, but it was an article here, and they said allegedly these of people died, and Burma say this, and this allegedly happened. They actually said what has been, what is supposedly happening. So at least they're telling us. You haven't told us, Jack. Nor are you apparently going to do so. Burmese refugees living in this country, which you can easily interview and get interviewed from. And if Burma isn't going to give you a statement of what, what, what their against is happening, then that's their fault, then their side is going to be covered. That's not, it's not unbiased if only one side is giving you an interview. You say, here's an interview from one guy, the other guy refuses to comment. Make your own interpretation. That's a complete unbiased report. You could do that, but you won't be, you know, going into a sacred vow, BBC. You could do that. BBC News is committed to impartial and objective reporting and we believe we have covered the conflict as it has developed 
detailing the ethnic and sectarian aspects of the violence across our television, radio and online reports. Really? Well, it's still developing and I haven't heard anything for the last couple of months. Following on San Suu Kyi's election victory earlier this year and Burma's continuing movement into the international fold, our coverage has also looked at the situation facing the Rohingya. Max Thompson's report for today on 7th of April explores the latest round of restrictions imposed by the Burmese government of the Rohingya. Okay, that was all the way back in April. Now this problem has always been here, but quite recently it's escalated even further badder Lee. Give me a break, I haven't studied English in like two years. It's escalated and you haven't even said it's escalated. You haven't even said it's just got worse. Oh, in fact, it's still happening. Because loads of people, I didn't even know about it until recently. So, you're not doing a very good job of reporting what's happening in the world when I don't know what's happening in the world. You still listen to the topic at this link below. Towering above me here in central Rangoon. Okay, so I've just listened to that um, show. And that's what they should still be doing. Because that was all in April. And, what that, and that report was about the oppressive about the Rohingyas being oppressed about having less rights and being subjected to ba uh, to state prejudice. That was in April. Since then, it's escalated to violence, to um, Rohingyas being murdered, tortured, burnt alive, raped. So it's gone. It's gone, it's gone from simply prejudice to crap, basically. It's gone worse. And usually when things get worse, that's news. So it's all all very well saying that you did it before. We want to see, you know, we want to be updated. We need people to be told. In early June, BBC News, Virgil Kane reported on a declaration of a state of emergency in Rakhine during Radio 4 news bulletins and BBC One's News at 10. Most more recently, Radio 4's 1st of August edition of the World Tonight discussed a Human Rights Watch report which detailed specific instructions for violence on the Burma Bangladesh border, singling out the Burmese government's handling. Okay, that's well. They did mention it, but they mentioned this on a one off show on a radio show. So not mainstream news. And I can't hear it, so I don't know how detailed it was and have all the BBC's word for it. Um now I Radio 4 is the second most popular radio station in Britain, apparently, or something like that. But that's in general. So some people might have missed a show, and it's, if it's only mentioned one show, not everyone's going to hear about it. I didn't see that show. I'm a regular listener of Radio 4, and that's a show that I don't, I don't usually listen to, and I hadn't was listened to when that was broadcast. Um, it would be much more better if it was on the mainstream news where people can see it as opposed to a radio show which only a few watch. I mean the only time it says it's on it was on mainstream BBC one news was news at ten and it only reported on the state of emergency I suspect it didn't really talk into the uh onto people being killed much. In addition to this coverage the BBC News website has also reported on the conflict. Examples of articles are below. Okay, I've just watched and skimmed over those articles. I can give BBC some credit. They have reports on it and somewhat recently uh, those articles vary from two weeks ago to end of July, so about two weeks ago. So they have touched on it. So while they are mentioning it, they're not mentioning it on mainstream news. And to be honest, the only people who are going to read this are people who are looking for it. Which isn't the issue, really. It, the issue is, you know, you're a news channel, you're informing people. We should have you looking for news, you should tell us. At the very least, put it on the ticker tape at the bottom. You know, putting it onto your website where you can only find it if you're looking for it isn't that well. You know, I would ra it, we'd rather it be mentioned on mainstream news. BBC was actively looking at getting across the region for a continued to report the situation in Rakhine State, striving to do so in a fair and impartial manner. 
Thanks once again for taking the time to contact us. Kind regards, BBC Complaints. So that's the letter. So to summarise, they have been doing some stuff. We have to give them credit for that. But it's not. But they should probably be mentioning it more on mainstream news, at least until they take, you know, etc. So yeah. Oh god, just my look to pick a t shirt out of my drawer, which is actually five years too old for me, and that's not only to me, did there? Like, Tara, I have real props. That's a good thing.